No, what are you? What do you think are the main hacks that you've found to raise natural testosterone production beyond the icing protocol? Um, supplements, obviously, the really popular ones nowadays are like Tonkat Ali, Fadoja Aggressive. Those are the main two that have kind of come mainstream. Everyone's talking about. I'm actually currently running both of them along with creatine, so it's a little tough to say what's doing what. But I'll, I'm going to get my lab work checked, get the test results back, and see what the uh, see how they raise them. But would you say those are kind of the main two right now, or are there even better alternatives out there as far as raising natural testosterone? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I was really hyper analytical when it came to like what are the best herbs and supplements to actually facilitate you know high levels of testosterone. I think I do think test um, Tonkara Lee and Fedosia are both pretty effective and, and potent ways to actually stimulate the testes and, and testosterone production. There is another herb um, from traditional Chinese medicine. So I was like, at some at one stage, I was like, I want to talk to the best of the best in Chinese medicine. And I want to ask them what is the most potent herb that they know about for men's hormonal health. Um, and they pointed me towards um, a herb called Cistanch, um, C-I-S-T-A-N-C-H-E, Cistanch, um, also known as uh, Rukong Rong. And I was interested in learning more about it. And so I dived deep on on PubMed, looked at, there was one article where they the, the study was titled um, Cistanch, one of the best um, pharmaceutical, one of the best um, traditional gifts of modern medicine or something like that. Um, and I looked into the like the mechanism of action and I could see what it was doing in terms of upregulating a lot of the enzymes that are responsible for converting um, cholesterol into pregnenolone and then from pregnenolone downstream into all the other hormones. So what, what exactly does pregnenolone do in the human body? So pregnenolone is considered the mother of all hormones because okay. um, it's the first step in which cholesterol gets converted into pregnenolone. And then from pregnenolone, it can go downstream into um, progesterone, DHEA, okay. and all, all the other hormones. So that would be like a natural precursor you'd need to testosterone production even? Yeah, so sometimes we even see you know, as part of a PCT stack, even in your case, um, Pete, is like you could consider running like pregnenolone with Cistanch because you're oh. going to get that double up effect, um, you know, 10, 20 milligrams of pregnenolone. Um, that will actually help to facilitate the entire cascade. Okay, see, I don't know much about that because I've obviously I've heard of pregnenolone, but I really don't know what it does. So that's interesting. Now, like... I eventually want to segue, I think I have another 10 months before I can do it, into drug-tested lifting, which you have to be three years drug-free. So I don't know if pregnenolone would be allowed. My guess is a lot of that stuff that's actually the the replica of the hormone is, is banned usually. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of those are not an option, but the Sustench, is it, am I saying it right? Yeah. That yeah. would be possibly an option to kind of facilitate all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd say also like in combination, if you're looking at like um, some other like natty sups, for example, or some other ways that will not get you busted in a in a drug test, um, mega dosing taurine at about five to seven grams a day um, can actually help to reverse testicular damage following um, steroid use. So it can actually help to restore testicular architecture and function as well wow okay i had no idea about any of this so this is really interesting i'll have to, I'll have to go back and take notes on this because this is right up my alley i'm not it's it's weird with me in my case this is a very special case i don't i haven't seen it much before there's not a lot of examples out there but the lh is like nine and the, the fsh is like or no the lh is 9.9 .9 or something that and the fsh is nine so the signaling wow. is extremely high but the actual total testosterone level is in the 300 range which is just baffling to me the free testosterone is um 9.5 on a scale from about 10 to 30 so that the testosterone mm. production isn't there but the signaling is which makes me wonder if you know these two methods you talked about with the sustench and the taurine would do the trick 
as far as possibly, you know, turning that back on, that's something I'll have to look into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, having having known that now, Pete, I'm thinking like, um, is there, yeah, testicular da uh, like damage or some of the actual testicular architecture and structure and function um, in your case, knowing the fact that, you know, you're getting a lot of signaling from the top down, but the actually testes are not responding well, then yeah, definitely taurine, cystanch. Okay. Um, I'd even say certain like um, mitochondrial enhancers. So obviously L-carnitine is going to be beneficial in your case as well um, for, you know, just, you know, in, uh, supporting mitochondrial function in the testes. Um, and then you could also look into some other herbs as well. The other herb that I'm really interested in and what I've recently discovered is a herb that actually outperformed testosterone itself um, in terms of increasing testosterone. And that was um, interesting because it, it actually increased testosterone and kept levels elevated for up to one month after stopping use. And that herb there is called uh, Anacyclus pyrethrum, um, okay. which I, I did a, I recently did a video on that. Uh, I think it was like two months ago. Uh, but I think that one there will start to see popping up in a lot of um, natural testosterone boosting formulas.